it's happened again. Cops accused of unprovoked brutality, this time slamming a 19-year-old into a jail wall and then pepper spraying him. It's all caught on camera. The teenager, Michael Bergeron, was arrested for drunk driving and drug possession. But look at this video from YouTube. Did the cop have any reason to slam him into the wall? Good evening. I'm Jane Velez Mitchell coming to you live. Let's debate it. Disturbing video emerging on YouTube, a police officer throwing a teenager against the wall. Bergeron had been arrested for drunk driving and possession of drugs. He claims he suffered broken teeth and a head injury during the incident. As the video goes on, you can clearly see the officers laughing. One of them even smiles as he looks right at the camera. Here's my rant. These New Hampshire cops say the kid was uncooperative. He may be mouthing off to police. But as irritating as that is, it doesn't make it okay to slam somebody against the wall. It's unnecessary roughness. The problem is, if we say this violence is okay, we'll let it go, we'll give them a pass, we're opening a Pandora's box. Where will the police violence stop? The overwhelming majority of cops are courageous Americans who risk their lives every day to protect you and me. This makes them look bad. It's not fair to police. Look at the cops smiling after the head slam. Look at that. You know, they're not supposed to act like that. You know, they're not supposed to be laughing. Laughing. Laughing and smiling. Laughing and smiling over a kid getting his head slammed. Now, they got to realize that they're on camera because you see that the cop, one of them, looks right into the camera and smiles. So this is just plain old dumb. What do they think? This was never going to come out? Tonight, I'm asking... What if this was your son and he made the mistake that lots of teens, and I made it when I was a teenager, made of drinking and driving, would you be upset if he was body slammed and pepper sprayed by the cops? Call me, 1-877-JVM says 1-877-586-7297. Straight out to our Lion's Den debate panel and they are ready to rumble. We're gonna start with defense attorney Brian Clable. Do you believe that there is something wrong with that picture? Jane, are you kidding me? This isn't a UFC championship fight, okay? This is a police officer who's trained to deal with suspects who've been arrested for drug charges and for DUIs. An officer has to be in fear of being harmed in order to slam somebody against the wall. You saw the tape, it speaks volumes. This suspect was simply walking straight ahead. The cop slammed his head into the wall. That's not only criminal, but this young man should be suing for a civil, a civil Jordan rights law as well. Jordan Rose, attorney out of Phoenix. Look, we have no idea what happened before we see the video, we right? We do, though. These, this kid, matter? no, we know that this guy was arrested for it driving matter. while intoxicated. It, he was on matter? drugs. And since this time it, in 2009, this guy's been arrested three more times. So I have to... It, I. I, the investigation needs to take place, and we need to see what precipitated this, because he could have been crazy. He could have been acting irrationally. They might have had to put him down in some John way. John Lieberman. And well, there's might, two, yeah, there's two separate what issues we don't here. Know look, that. look, John Lieberman. We can't, we can't hear audio. We don't know what this kid is saying. But in some ways, it doesn't matter. It's safe to say, I've read through That's the right. police reports, it's safe to say that this kid was a pain in the butt to all of these officers the entire night, if you believe the police report. He was yelling profanity at them. He was pushing them in some cases, according to the police report. But police are trained to not get frustrated. And what I think you saw there was some frustrated, angry cops tired of dealing with a jerk of a teenager all night and but they stepped over the edge. you don't know if it was just a jerk or if they felt like their life was in danger. And if they felt like their life was in danger, we need to know that and we need to see it. So let's see what happened before this because I find well, it weird you, that this I, thing I've got some information. According to the police report, this kid, Michael, was arrested for a DUI and drug possession. The report says he was uncooperative, aggressive, yelling, swearing, and tried to flush his own shirt down the toilet. The town manager says they stand behind the cops at this point but they're looking into what happened. We stand behind the Seabrook Police Department. We think that the Seabrook Police Department and the Chief of Police uh, take their responsibility to the public uh, very seriously. I know I do, uh, and we will conduct a, a full and thorough investigation. 
Now, uh, Greg Cady, former LAPD detective, author of Murder Rap. This kid is no angel. Look at his rap sheet. According to SeacoastOnline.com, he was arrested on a charge of possession of controlled narcotic drugs in 2010. Simple assault in 2013. 2011, he was found guilty of conspiracy to sell controlled drugs. Does that history affect how we judge the cop's behavior in this case? Absolutely not. All of that is completely irrelevant to what we see happening on that tape. That tape indicates, obviously, those cops were on, not under any kind of threat. Doesn't matter what kind of verbal abuse is going on. There's no way to justify that action. What's most disturbing is when you look at that in slow motion, how intentional it actually was. You see the cop leaning directly into his shoulder in order to place to, to force his face into that wall. You cannot justify those actions. And what's most surprising to me is that this is happening at a time and place when cops know they're on a surveillance camera. Yeah, that's what hey, I don't Jane, get. Go hey, ahead. Jane. Hey, Jane. No. If this, guy, if this kid was so uncooperative, why did they not have him handcuffed? He didn't even have any handcuffs on. That proves that these cops were belligerent and they knew what but, they were going to do. And the cop laughs at the last second because this kid was posing no harm at all. And Let's here's the other thing, line. Jane. Idea. This is, this, this is here's the other thing. You're jumping this, to such a conclusion. We haven't seen everything. It's like taking a video of your kid in a parade. It, you see the kid in a parade. You would handcuff somebody if they were going to harm you. But here's happened. the thing. This happened back in 2009. Internal Affairs should be going through tapes from that period forward and seeing if there's anything else on those tapes. These incidents oh, yeah. don't just happen once, and this one happened four years ago. Well, I want to and talk about YouTube justice. No, he said he gave it to his lawyer. For some reason, it didn't uh, go anywhere, and then he finally decided to put it on YouTube. It's gotten 82,000 views, and now, voila, magically, we now have yeah. an investigation, and three cops are on uh, paid leave as the department looks into what happened. So, you know, I what I find fascinating is we're in this YouTube culture now where I call it YouTube justice. You have a complaint about something, put it up on YouTube. You know, calling, calling government agencies. When's the last time you got an answer? Usually get a recording, <laughs> right? Or beep, 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 beep. No, put it up on YouTube. You'll get answers. I want to go very quickly to Carol, Indiana. Carol, Indiana, what you got to say about this, Carol? Jane, I'm infuriated. Number one, anytime you ar arrest anybody that's under the influence, you're going to get that adverse behavior. They, all they had to do was handcuff him and put him in a cell. That's all they had to do. But how many people do you hear when they're drunk and disorderly conduct? That's another charge, and it should never be like that, Jane. Never should well, be like that. And listen, this isn't the first time we've seen cops pushing suspects arrested for DUI. You remember the case of the woman who wouldn't look at the camera to take her mug shot? Got to show you this one because this is, unfortunately, a classic. Cops allegedly push her to the cell so hard, it broke her face. If you watch for a couple seconds more, you'll see blood spurting out. She needed, I think, she needs some kind of reconstructive surgery after that. It is bad. The blood starts pretty darn soon. There it is. I mean, is there something about uh, the blood, Greg Caden? Is there something about drunk people? Listen, I'm a recovering alcoholic with 18 years of sobriety. I know that when you're drunk, you're out of control. You're a pain in the tuchus. You know, is it something about DUIs that makes these cops go over the edge? Well, usually you're dealing with somebody who may, you know, is uncooperative. They may be even verbally uh, offensive. But the truth of the matter is, as a police officer, when you have somebody in custody, your responsibility is to protect them, not only from themselves, but from you. And so you have to maintain control of your own emotions and so that these type of things don't happen. They, they just shouldn't happen.